It's story time! Hello and welcome to the Storytime Podcast and this week I have with me my second repeat guest, James Mitchell TV. I was hoping to take the gold for <laughs> second guest. <laughs> he pictured it the most last week, Neil. I'm okay with that because gold is tacky and silver is actually nice. <laughs> I kind of agree with that, actually. Yeah, um, like, you wouldn't accept a gold engagement ring. You'd be like, <laughs> I love you, but no. no. <laughs> uh, so, I want to quick update here before we get started. Um, I have started using a service called Anchor, Anchor FM. So, I used to manually push the audio version of this podcast to SoundCloud, and that would push it to all the other stuff. So, that's where the limitation came in on what platforms I was on. Um, I'm now using Anchor, which is... The home of the audio version of this podcast. Right. And it's pushing it to iTunes and hopefully very shortly Google Play, Pocket Casts and two other apps that people actually use. So it's going to be, the audio version of this is hopefully going to be slightly easier for people to get because people have been complaining, which I understand it's not readily available yet on Android. So hopefully getting it on Google Play will resolve that. Um, I know that this isn't my podcast, so I'm kind of not allowed to say what I'm absolutely want but there okay. is free reign but you're like you know I understand that people are complaining I feel the opposite shut up stop <laughs> complaining Claire takes time to welcome strangers into her home in order to record a podcast um, and she puts it up on multiple platforms so shut up Claire doesn't <laughs> think that though it's just me right <laughs> just me no I, I understand when people are like but there was one person that was like I want it on this particular platform and I was like can you not listen to it on this one that's also available on your type of phone and they were like no (laughs) (laughs) well then you don't want to listen enough I was like it's really can you maybe just watch it on YouTube then because it's really difficult for me to get but anyway I've hopefully now managed to hit all of the fucking (laughs) apps that people want so I'm actually gonna also I make no money from the audio version of it just FYI not that I make any money from the YouTube version (laughs) either though Thin ice, thin ice. But, uh, but yeah, watch it on wa- YouTube. If you want to buy a story time sweatshirt, they're down in the description. There you go. Okay, let's get into it. This is James Mitchell TV. Remind people where to find you on the internet. Uh, first off, I'd like to give a shout out to my boyfriend who is probably the biggest fan of this podcast. He listens in the car all the time because he drives all over the country for work and he puts it on and plays it through his like Bluetooth. So okay. hi, Sean. Well, to Sean, then I apologize for the audio quality and <laughs> I have bought higher mic stands so the mics will be closer to our mouths so the audio is about to get a lot better in this podcast actually I Sean is the person who's I've been bought, complaining I bought soundproof thing as well Ooh. yeah because I I finally Ooh. figured out the problem the mics are too far away from our mouths also you've been getting terrible guests on no <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, that's the content. That's not the audio quality. Right. Well, I mean, the issues the a person's voice could be part of an audio problem. Exhibit A. Uh, so True. to answer your question, uh, you can find me on YouTube and Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all James Mitchell TV. And I don't know when this is going up, but you can find me perhaps on... Next Wednesday? A certain channel that's coming soon, maybe. Oh, well, I'm sure that that's public knowledge now. Because um, they put out a yeah. teaser for it. They put out Try a teaser, channel. but they haven't Try specified channel. who it, will channel. be honest. Try so. Channel 30th of April, we're both going to be honest. Okay, well, I was trying to be very mysterious about Fuck it. Fuck it, you started in my domain. Yeah, Try <laughs> Channel, go subscribe. Try They've already had 2,000 subscribers as the point of recording this. And the name Try Channel makes much more sense than other names that didn't make as much sense. That's all I'm going to say. That's a fact. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, when we were in filming in Try, uh, I suggested that when they were doing hoodies, I'm putting this out there, every appearance, every YouTube channel I can, so that people understand that this is my idea before this goes up, where they were like, oh, we're going to get, you were like, oh, I can't wait to get a Try hoodie, and I was like, why not do the Try logo in three colours, as in the Try colour, as in the Irish flag, and everyone went... Oh, that's stupid. No, at the time I went, oh, what a dad joke. Like the tri colour. But the more I think about it, the more I'm like, hot damn, that's clever. (laughs) And the best part is, I'm only charging 10% for each sale. (laughs) I'm so generous. Normally it's like. Just a 10% cut off the top for the idea. Yeah. So we thought we would talk today about. not about Try Channel, but kind of about YouTube in general, like, and our experiences with YouTube, and because we were YouTube ambassadors. R.I.P. <laughs> we drove it into the ground. <laughs> hey, 
I don't. I was a YouTube ambassador for two years in Ireland, and there is now no more YouTube ambassadors. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me or I was actually, YouTube ambassadors. <laughs> I was the Jerry Halliwell of the situation where I left just in time. I was like, sorry, I'm going to pursue solo projects, and then literal months later, it was like, <laughs> oh god. It was great crack though. I I remember it kind of came about with through the Irish YouTube convention CrackCon. Yes. Uh, which is speculated but not confirmed to be returning in 2018. Oh, who knows? Mm, who knows? Uh, it could be absolute speculation though, because these things are organised by you? people who. I was going to say really attractive people, but you said you, which is just an alternate <laughs> way of saying really attractive people. It's organised by people in their spare time and it takes so much work. Oh, Christ, I know. And anyone who has not been to one or just thinks about it on paper it's just like it's just a convention of people from youtube in one place at the same time it how is that hard to organize? to organize shut up that's how so as part of our role as youtube masters we do organize events for creators but the majority of them bar the creator day we did together mm. the majority that me and sean did together were a lot smaller events yeah. and we obviously as well had the power of Google behind us, like they would use their marketing yeah. or their uh, like events company to organize stuff, and so really all we had to do was prepare a presentation, mm. realistically. Like, and we promoted the event, but like their their systems took care of like people registering, and the, yeah. you know they had an event th- team that put together like the food and all that sort of stuff. So. Crackon did not have Crack that. Crackon had none of that. No. So every single thing that had to be organised, you guys had to organise it. You had to organise the speakers, you had to organise t-shirts, you had to organise tickets and money and paying the, the thing. I don't know how you did it. I mean, I like I organised the comedy night last night. <laughs> Fuck me. It is so time consuming. Yeah. Like, I don't know how you organise the whole YouTube comedy night. But like, there's night. things you don't even think of, like in event insurance. Oh that- my God, I literally never think of that. <laughs> Not in a million years. I mean, we were a month out and the venue were like, can you just send on your event insurance policy number? And we were like, sure. <laughs> One, two, <laughs> three, four. <laughs> Basically, no, we actually ended up uh, directly going to a sponsor who were Wicked Weddings, Donna E, um, because they wanted to... Which is a bit of a random... I suppose it's not for lifestyle vlogging, actually. That's exactly why they were like, we want gotcha. to get involved. And Fiona and the team in Wicked Weddings are so fantastic. And if a Wicked Weddings show ever comes to a city or town near you, go. Because they are absolutely crazy. They have like oh, Alice, really? Alice in Wonderland themed oh, cool. weddings. They had a druid wedding. Oh, wow. It okay. was so cool. That's cool. Um, and This is not sponsored, by the way. Did you know the, the new rules came out? That, oh, like, we have even to... if you get free stuff now, you have to yeah. call it an ad. Yeah. So this Bullshit. is not an advertisement. No, no. I didn't get any free shit. <laughs> From Wicked Weddings. But, I mean, <laughs> I've heard that you had, like, people contacting you about, like, trying on 40 different shades of green wedding dresses for a prank video on YouTube. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> We got you so good. I was like, that sounds vaguely familiar. We got you so good. <laughs> and then at the end of it, you were like... Was I real mad? I think I feel like I was real mad. <laughs> yeah. You commented, like, you were like, oh. I hated you at the time, <laughs> but this is really funny now. <laughs> oh, actually, oh my God, I remember. So, yeah, so you got... It was a Mary Claire. Me and Mary Claire did prank And she videos, was doing yeah. like a Northern accent. Yes, And Jean, she rang yeah. me and she was like, I got... And the thing was, she was pitching this thing to me and I was like... Okay, she must be taking the piss. But at the start, she had been like, I got your number from James Mitchell. Yeah. I think that was when I got annoyed because mm-hmm. she was pitching me this idea and I sort of let her go with it. And then when she got to the 40 Shades of Green wedding dresses, I was like, I'm sorry, where did you get my number? And she goes, oh, James Mitchell gave it to me. And I was like, well, normally I don't like it when people give out my number to people. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. If you want to send me a pitch on an email, I think it's something like that. You were halfway through. Laughing. Yeah, that was it. You were like halfway through a full rant at Mary Claire yeah. with this woman named Jean. You were like, normally I appreciate if you'd let me know at the very start where you got my number. And then I just went, well, thank God James is sitting beside her. <laughs> <laughs> and the line just went dead. And you just went, you're a prick. And just <laughs> you just went, you're that, a prick. That's video. That video is still there. You can find that on youtube.com forward slash James Mitchell TV. I'll put the link down in the description. Oh, thanks. I yeah. can do with some extra money. Well, I'll put the link to the actual video as well, is what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Cool. But, uh, it was yeah. a great video. I was like, Claire is going to murder I me. I hate prank calls. They're really... They're just... <laughs> How about such this? a waste of time. The next time we do a clap video together, I'll 
We'll do Frank. Oh, we shouldn't probably broadcast that we're going to prank call people now. We're not going to do we this. Should, we should do the thing where you prank call into places you don't work. Sorry, <laughs> I'm the, too afraid I'm the too Jenna afraid. and Julian thing. Yeah, it's so funny. I watched the other, the one last week oh, where, where she called the tax people and the receptionist was like, "Okay, good luck, <laughs> bye." You want to do your taxes? No, I want to. I work doing your taxes. <laughs> It was oh, great. Anyway. Yeah. So, so back to CrackCon. Oh yeah, we were talking about CrackCon and um, it is... And it, you flew over a couple of UK creators. Or you yeah. organised for them. Yeah, we had... Over. Yeah, they came over because they wanted to... They had strong Irish fan bases and there had never been anything like this for them to take part in and we kind of pitched it to them that it was very similar to Somewhere in the City. I would like to say I, I love Somewhere in the City but CrackCon was really a lot more intimate yeah, well, at that point, Summer City had become sort of this big, massive VidCon esque yeah. monster. Um, I very, so I can't say VidCon esque. It's it, I mean on the sca- on the triangle of impersonality. Yeah. I mean VidCon Europe is at the top, then yeah. VidCon, then I would say Summer City is quite close to the bottom because even though it is this big convention, there's it's still not as bad, yeah, a lot of intimacy. But it's with, also not the Summer in City that was in the park years ago. No, do you know what I mean? There no. is a level of separation there. They are VIPs and non-VIPs. Kind of yeah, like. and I mean... And you're queuing and screaming. Like, there is a bit of separation there. Yeah, we even had that. Like, there's certain bigger YouTubers who completely outright called CrackCon out for not being on in the field anymore, even though they had never attended themselves. And they were like, oh, this is ridiculous that you're doing panels and panelists and featured people. They had never been to one before, so they didn't understand that standing in the middle of the Phoenix Park with no public toilets and nowhere Such, to go when yeah. it started raining because this is Ireland. <laughs> they didn't understand why we had to charge people to rent a venue. Yeah, well, because the venue cost money. I remember you telling me how much it cost. I was like, what? It was yeah. insane money. But it was it was so worth like it. Like, it was like, worth it. Was yes, no, I, yeah, I'm not, not denying that, but I just did, did, I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. And the best um, part was the YouTube community in Ireland were like, okay, it... it this venue obviously costs a lot of money and these guys are going to a lot of work, but it's only going to cost us like a five or a ten yeah. to go. Let's do it. But the and thing is, it was if, great. if you're renting a space, right? Mm. So you're trying to get us in off out of the rain and you're renting a space. Mm. So you have to pay for the space. So then you have to start charging people. Yeah. So then if you're going to charge someone, you can't just charge someone to come and hang out in a hall. Yeah. So it, people could come and hang out in the fucking field, no problem, yeah. for free. But why would I pay five to go hang out in a hall? So then you have to organize yeah. panels and classes or whatever you can do to make that fiver worth people's make it worth it you know yeah and actually you did because not only was there panels like where people give their experiences and like you didn't have to go to them if you weren't interested in them you had them scheduled so you could choose like there were two things were running at once so you could if you didn't want to go to a panel where youtubers talked about themselves which is all panels <laughs> ever shade or any YouTuber just ever, uh, what's called it? Like you go to the other thing. You could go to like a workshop, yeah. or and you got in your man from Canon. Yeah, we had the team from YouTube really there, good, and the team from YouTube. Yeah. Like they were really good panels, or sorry, really good like uh, workshops. workshops. Yeah. So you could choose to go to whichever one you'd rather go to, and we also got a T-shirt for a fiver. Yeah. The last I mean, it was an extra five for the t-shirt, but like yeah. that is still like I still have that t-shirt, and that mm. t-shirt's actually I remember at the time I don't think he meant to buy like a sport. It's fabric. like a jersey. It's like it's like a work. It's like a gym t-shirt, and I actually wear it to the gym, and I love it. It was literally because it's such high quality for no a fiber. shade, but it was literally because it was the cheapest. But it's such high quality for a fiber. Like it's insane. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we worked our asses off. Like, the amount of work that went into to tendering all these different t-shirt companies to be like, this is what we're doing. We're not asking for them for free. We're asking for a little bit of a discount and we'll be like, you did it. And it worked out. And it took a lot of work. Um, And it was through... Actually, the, I will say quickly, the one thing from that crack con that I regret, because I, you know, with being one of the organisers, I was all over the place and putting out mini fires. The one yeah. workshop... I missed and regret was that we got the shifts guys to do a comedy workshop. I know I missed that one as well. I missed Actually, it and I heard nothing but we, good things. Did we miss it because we were on a panel at the same time? I think that was exactly. I was yeah, yeah. interviewing you guys yeah, yeah. on the vloggers panel, yeah. right? Yeah. Um. And actually, yeah, the shifts panel was meant to be amazing. I heard way so better than your one. <laughs> <laughs> but you also hosted something. I had this little brain thing, and I was like, Claire needs to host this, where we picked, and it was in direct. F you to that you the big YouTuber who had been like, oh, it's not community based if you're charging people and making them queue up to meet people. 
where we got you to do... Well, we weren't, then nobody was queuing to meet people, but yeah, whatever. I can't even remember but who like, that was. That person, did, I'll tell you afterwards, <laughs> yeah, um, but that person mm-hmm, didn't <laughs> know because they didn't go. I love when people moan about shit when they don't fucking engage with it anyway. And they're like, they're like, oh, I've never been to this, but I'm just going to complain because I can. And you have to listen to me because I am who I am. Get fucked. Like, <laughs> get fucked. Yeah. Um, but... There was the panel, I can't remember what we called it. I think we called it YouTube with just a U. And do you remember we picked random oh people God, yeah. from the audience in a raffle and brought them up and we were like, what's your YouTube channel? How many subscribers that do you have? That is my what favorite, do you one do? of my favorite things I've ever done. It was so funny. Do you remember the two, there was these two guys and they got up on stage and held hand as a, hands as a joke. And then when they were handed a microphone, they were like, they didn't want to let go of hands. So they put it in the middle. <laughs> and by the end of the hour, there was sweat dripping Amazing. off the microphone. I'd actually puddle. forgotten about that. I remember so your great. man who showed us his first YouTube video. Oh, and then, uh, what Bojangles. What was it? Uh, something Bojangles. Yeah, and then... Swe- sweaty Bojangles? Some, yeah, something and like then, that. And then it was like... <laughs> everyone was like, I met the Sweaty Bojangles guy. Oh my God, so funny. It wasn't Sweaty Bojangles. No. I'm so close though. Yeah, it's so, uh, we're going to think of it halfway through. But Kitty Bojangles. Something it was like, through so CrackCon then that the uh, YouTube... He became like super famous for a while. Fix that. Oh God. Fix that. He, he, came, he became super famous for a while. Everyone was sweaty like, Bojangles. Oh, that's what I said. It, I think it is Sweaty Bojangles. Sweaty Bojangles. Yeah. But everyone was like, I met the Sweaty Bojangles guy. And it was so funny. But it was through that that the uh, ambassadorship program came along. Yeah. Because the team from YouTube were there that day. Um, and afterwards, you... Sean Connolly and myself were all approached quite separately mm-hmm. um, and we're like, would you be interested in doing this? I actually think you were approached first because I'm presuming that he got he got our names off you. Like yes, he saw yes. us but he didn't know our names he, or how to contact us. He was like, he asked me what you guys were like. Because, mm. you know, understandably, people may appear differently at an event like that. Well, true. And also YouTubers are notoriously hard to work with. Yeah. So I lied to him and I was like, yeah, they're both fine. <laughs> they're grand. They're nice. Uh, even though uh, inside my head I was like, tell him you saw Claire flip off a nun or something. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Claire punch a bee once. Like. <laughs> um, so it all happened really fast because that was CrackCon. It was in July or early August. And then literally a week later we were doing like Skype calls from the facts office. And then yes, the week after actually. that we were in Google head- Google's European headquarters in Dublin getting ready to do all these presentations and then the week after it was like the week after it was creator day creator day so it went really quickly at first so we got the yeah. ambassador roles and then we were literally organising a creator day in a couple of weeks yeah. and the creator day so they had a number of different events at Google and they actually changed them as well halfway through but at the start when we started creator day was like an annual thing and it was a big thing and it was like a day and you know you, you were trying to get like 100 or 200 um, creators there mm. and then they, they scaled down the events after that and it was Thank more focused. Jesus. I know, but it, but they were also more often. So it was like create creator roundtables were one thing we had, mm. which was where we got creators together, and like focused on one aspect, like or one skill or whatever. And then there was like a presentation given, and then everyone would talk about it and give feedback on each other's channels, blah blah blah. And then there'd be like a, a end of the day thing, mm. whether it be a performance or whatever. And they get some free stuff from YouTube and free food. You know, it'd be worth it, basically. Free swag. Free swag, as a, <laughs> our manager, Danilo, called it. We loved him. He was um, great. He was very funny. And it, But we never explained to him why swag was wrong. So it, it, he was made, he meant to say swag, obviously. I prefer kept, the term swag. I prefer swag. So yeah. we just let him say... We would just giggle every time he said swag. <laughs> and I don't know if he ever really understood why, but... It was I, I don't know if he was trying to put an Irish accent on it or what he was trying to do, but it was just so funny. I don't Everybody think it was intentional. It. And, and then we all started calling it Schweig then, because yeah. that was our thing then. Yeah. And, um, Turn my Schweig on. But yeah, so we created round tables and then we had happy hours, which were basically nights out. Um, and they sort of limited them after a while. Oh, why? Um, was it all the free alcohol? Yeah, I actually remember the first... Do you remember the first time we had a happy hour? 
So the first time we had a happy hour, it was no actually, names. No, obviously not. Oh. But the first time we had a happy hour, mm. it was they did it after the main event. So they stopped doing that. They were like, let's separate them. Yeah. And actually, they ended up getting rid of happy hours altogether. But um, why? After this one, they were like, let's try them separate and let's take up the alcohol. <laughs> so the the first one was after a creator like we'd had a half day full of learning or whatever, and then it was like, oh, into um happy hour and free drink in it, we were in Google free drink and there's wine and there's beer and like everyone was milling around having a great time whatever and then everyone started to get a little bit leery because there's a lot of free alcohol going around and then long story short there was an incident where somebody tried to sneak out two bottles of wine in a handbag and well now you've given away that they had a handbag Claire you've halved the audience <laughs> That that's you're the one making assumptions. You're, you're right. Making, you're, you're, it was my handbag. How dare you assume a handbag owner's gender uh, <laughs> <laughs> and a wine drinker's gender? Um, but that person knows who they are, and they're definitely watching now. And I would just like to say hi. <laughs> well, the issue wasn't really. It was. It was. There was a lot of politics involved. It was basically. I don't really know. It, let's let's just, just put it this way. Just, it was really not cool. Of that person. And that person holds their hands up now and says, I was being an idiot. Yes, but I think that the, the person that we... Yeah, the person that did that, that owns up to it, was actually the least culpable of the group of people uh-huh. that were involved. And it's the rest of the group that are like, we did nothing wrong. And I'm like, oh, fuck you guys. With um, a rake. So afterwards, then, <laughs> he was like, yeah, we've... Um, like, worldwide, we've... Uh, <laughs> We, we've t- t- pulled this back and we're going to take it the alcohol. Just out of coincidence, and really. We're also not going to have it in Google. <laughs> Do you remember that okay. night, though? And this 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 doesn't reflect badly on, on anything, I suppose. It, this was not Google's fault. But there was a person who had flown specifically to Dublin for the Creator Day because okay. their country didn't have one. Oh, okay. And in the pub... They were being incredibly oh, I know, I know rude about, yeah. and inappropriate and acting just really inappropriately. And when someone stood up to them about their inappropriate behaviour, uh, the person who did it so happened Squared to well. be gay. And the person who had been behaving inappropriately started using really homophobic language towards the person. And yeah, then I, I, <laughs> I, I, had, I was sitting in the background and I was like, like honestly, like someone in, on a reality show where they're just in the background with a straw and a yeah. drink. I was like... <laughs> Ooh. but then when the homophobia came in I was like Psh, no <laughs> like yeah, it just movie. it was so horrible but uh, it, it was so random like yeah. uh, it was a byproduct of too much alcohol we drink it for too long the happy hour was too early yeah. you know it was too much free booze then we moved to a pub whatever we also <laughs> did not know this person this person was a very different like obviously mannerisms and everything were very mm. different and culture wise he was very different very bad so and I don't mean that in a negative way. No. I just mean like that. I think a lot of the humor and where we were slagging each other off, maybe he didn't get it. Yeah. Um. But anyway, long story short, he ended up getting aggressive, and it just sort of. I remember just sitting there being like, "What the fuck is going on? Yeah. <laughs> like, where has this come out of? Because I hadn't been involved in that conversation. It just seemed to to someone who wasn't involved in it sort of explode out of nowhere. It was absolutely out of nowhere and the really one thing that annoyed me actually. was we were at a YouTube event and no one fucking recorded it <laughs> I was like but I always think who has like, a camera I think it's so funny because I think when you are a creator mm. on YouTube mm. and if you are at a YouTube event you still have like a minimum a target of decorum that you have to hit because yes you're in the pub great but it's like going for drinks with your work yes and, like, you can't act like a dick. And, you know, you can't be doing stuff like robbing the wine and being like, I did nothing wrong. Or you can't be getting homophobic or getting aggressive or trying to start a fight yeah. with people who are essentially your colleagues. Yeah. And I understand that a lot of people have this fundamental misunderstanding of that. They're like, I- I'm on YouTube. I like, it's my channel. I'm I'm me on my channel. This isn't so my have- job. You're yeah, not my employer. You're not my employer. And it's like no you're right but also you're kind of wrong because you're still these are people that are in the same field as you they're kind of your colleagues they're at very least your community don't be a dick but even removing that like 
I'm I'm real and I get to st- I I can get I can say what I want. I hate the excuses. No, yeah. you fucking can't. It's just me, and if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. And it's like, but you're being such a dick, though. People like, who say that don't deserve oxygen. <laughs> like they don't. They t- take oxygen for granted. But anyway, after that event, like literally two days later, we went to San Fran. Oh my god, it was two days later as well. Like two, <laughs> like I mean, we were in the airport and we were like still reeling in the shock after what had happened with those two that things was... we were just sitting in in dublin airport terminal two like the three of us just looking at each other going like what just happened just to clarify the third person because we mentioned him by name earlier we didn't explain it uh it's sean Connolly, who mm. was in the drinking stories episode Um, he was the third uh youtube ambassador you're being so shady he was working you're being so shady acting as if people aren't gonna know who sean Connolly is okay i didn't even mean it like that but okay <laughs> whatever uh he was a producer with me at fax and and he's an all-round gentleman really he is an all-round gentleman yeah yurt oh uh, god so <laughs> Man, i hate that word it's not a word yurt <laughs> but it, that was the best thing that was so cool that we got to go to san francisco like it wasn't it wasn't i well, i per like all expenses pay was pretty fucking sweet yes i missed my first week of university for it and i don't regret it because it was great yeah but i did find we were sitting listening to a lot of for what we were doing we were sitting and listening to a lot of unnecessary talking that was my opinion that's 100 percent my opinion and a standalone opinion but i just there were a lot of points where i sat there going as an ambassador how is this going to benefit me i could be doing something i could be in a workshop right now doing something else i could be meeting with other ambassadors right now and asking them what they do and it actually ended up that when we did get to meet all the other ambassadors and we did this little thing with a whiteboard and we were like pitching to each other. Oh yeah. Half the ambassadors had to leave because that had been left till the very end and their flights were in yeah. mere hours. Whereas that really should have been the focal point of Yes, yeah, so they spent a there. lot of time sort of t- like revealing things that were coming up on the platform and that was changes awesome. that were happening and that was pretty cool. Yeah. And um, then they spent a lot of time explaining the YouTube Heroes program which was being launched at the time and the yep. ambassador was under that sort mm-hmm. of um, so but I thought that was really interesting so me and James had totally different opinions on that Yeah. Um, and that's just kind of like par for the course really but that's but, the best part about having more than at the time having more than one ambassador exactly, was that yeah. everyone's opinion was covered and I mean no disrespect by what I said I think that everything we learned there was important and was beneficial I was just a bit upset that not upset but a bit miffed that the core of why we were there wasn't prioritized i would the way i would say it it was more blue skies thinking or like oh it was like yes would you say it's more we more discussed like real wide strategy whereas you wanted to actually discuss what we were going to do this year 100 percent. it makes sense to me though as well yeah do you know so both both make sense oh i mean had it been the other way around and we had learned what we had to do specifically first and then, and then yeah, the broad stuff sense, actually, I would have yeah. been much happier but had we not done all the broad stuff I probably would be like oh, that's ridiculous why didn't we learn about any of this when we were there yeah, yeah so it was just a balance really and also it was it the around. first of first event of its kind like that being yeah. organised so for that to be my only criticism it's yeah, fairly good going. it was yeah. an excellent event oh my god the food oh my god the oh. food <sighs> and you know going outside in the San Francisco summer weather like to eat from food trucks and sit in the beautifully landscaped Google headquarters. That was, it was where beautiful. the shooting happened. Acro- so the, yeah. the place where we were was where the shooting happened. Do you remember, I don't know if you remember this, when we were coming... The recent shooting I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you remember when we were coming back out of the YouTube offices after we didn't sneak in to, <laughs> to go down the slides, but oh, on yeah. the way back... He doesn't work for them anymore, he can't get in trouble. <laughs> we were walking back and crossing the road from YouTube over to Google. Do you remember the old man walking down the street? Oh my God, yeah. And he was like... He said something and I went to me and I went, I stopped and I was like, excuse me? And he said, I said, fuck you. And I went, okay, have a nice day and just walked yeah. away. Yeah. Oh, America. So weird. Oh, America. It's random aggression. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't want to be like, it was definitely because I was gay. But he didn't say anything to the short redheaded girl <laughs> and he didn't say anything to the lad. Didn't who, say anything to John. Yeah, he didn't say anything to the lad who could grow a beard and was clearly from yeah, Tipperary slash Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, I, I suppose, after the ambassador program. Hmm. I had to I had to leave the ambassador program just because university was taking like way more of a toll on me. Than yeah, I so it would, Sean and, that and I sucked. Sean and I were actually very lucky because we got rid of James. 
that too. But <laughs> because Fax, we were working together in Fax, mm. and Fax allowed us the time in our personal lives that we didn't, you know, never do overtime or anything. Right. Stuff. And like obviously, college is very labor intensive, twenty four seven kind of thing. Whereas we were not. We finished mm. at five o'clock, so we had a lot of time to do this sort of stuff. Yeah. around our full-time jobs yeah. um, and because we were in fax as well it just made it a lot easier so like we'd be already together and we'd whatever a google video and conference with, with for two people who, for two people who didn't get a replacement for what was essentially going to be a three-person team yeah you guys fucking excelled like the events you Thank ran you. i never heard a bad word about the events you ran it's such a pity i'm sure there were bad words i'm sure they were but i didn't hear them um i'm sh- <laughs> like it's such a pity yeah. that it ended. Yeah. It is. It um, is a pity that it has to But, end. you know, but it it's was a pity time, lots of things end. Yeah, but it was time to get new ambassadors anyway. So... Oh. Well, that's what I felt. So right. I was... Because I remember around the time I was, like, getting in touch with them and I was like, you know, we should be getting a new ambassador. Because two years is a long time mm. and someone else needs to go. Fresh blood. And then it was literally came down from global that they were getting rid of ambassadors. So... Um, yeah, I mean, it's a pity, but, like, it is pretty cool. You can be like, I was a YouTube ambassador, and I was only one of two YouTube ambassadors. Um, three, bitch. Um, do you still care? Oh, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> okay, three. I was one of only three YouTube ambassadors 2. 5. ever. 2.5. <laughs> it's ever. one of 2.5. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, fuck it, three. For three, ever. Could She's you... saying that because I'm here, but, like, when I go, it's going to be like, two. Well... We, if I go to your LinkedIn page, <laughs> if I go to your LinkedIn page... <laughs> one of only two. Well, no, your LinkedIn page is probably like, I was the only. <laughs> <laughs> it was just me. It's just me. Just me by myself. I'm going to be real professional here and take out my phone, because I did write down like other things. Uh, definitely didn't do it while I was on the toilet at this point. But um, don't pretend you don't use your phone when you're on the toilet. Don't, of course Don't do. act like you're better than me. You're not. You are. Oh my God, the size of the type on your phone. I'm old. <laughs> Um, oh, I love, Hate comments. I love that phone that I won't name because it's not sponsored, but I love that phone. Oh, uh, yeah, I'd give, it a, I'd give it a plus one. Oh, on YouTube. Oh, Jesus, let's go. Okay. <laughs> okay, hate comments on YouTube. Uh, what's the worst hate comment you've ever got? Like, the one, not, like, first off, I think it's important to emphasise that we are not talking about this because we're bitter. I think you and I both agree that the, the comments that we get, we both piss ourselves laughing yeah. at. Like, for example, one of my favourite memories of being in your house was being in that room. It was when I lived in London, I came back for a, a thing in the Dublin office and you were kind enough to let me stay here. And we were watching Prime Time. Oh, I do remember this. Oh my God, I do remember this. Yeah. <laughs> Who was he? I can't remember. I don't know. It was some baby fucking TD on the television. And I... <laughs> and <laughs> he looked like he was high as a kite, wasn't it? And I tweeted, yeah. he looks like he's off his box or something like that. And he tweeted back... Yeah, something like that. That's really something like, mean. wow, that's really mean. Yeah, it was something like, wow, that's really mean. And I was like, pissing. I was crying. But there's a video, I'll actually put a link down because there's a video of me actually crying because he tweeted me back. But the thing was, I was in bed. I had gone to bed. I was like, good night. I'm in bed. And I was like, falling asleep. And the next thing, I like, mid dream, open my eyes, and you're standing at the foot of the bed, crouched over with a phone in your hand. Crying. Bawling. Like, <laughs> he tweeted me and said I was rude. But what, anyway, the hate comments. Um, what's so, the worst? Well, I don't know what the worst is, but the, the ones one that, that sticks come, in your the mind. The ones that come yeah. to mind. She deserves a stint in the rape dungeon. Was a particularly <sighs> <laughs> oof one. Um, That's not like if you find that funny. It's not like oh, I have such a dark sense of humor. No, you're a fucking yeah. sociopath. Like so, I made a couple of videos about the worst comments. So I did like mm. a sketch one about the worst comments. That's from that one. And then I did one where we went out to Grafton Street I love and that like one. got strangers to read me yeah. the comments. So that Do you remember the black man one? Where it yeah, was like, so this girl deserves to be raped by a black man and you were I like, hope, Why? No, I, was, I hope you get killed by a black man. I hope you get raped by a black man and then killed by his gay friend. And I remember being like, That's incredibly specific. <laughs> I remember being like, I'm the gay friend. <laughs> yeah, you actually did say that. <laughs> that was In a really video. fun video because there was these two teenage girls who hated reading it to you. They, they were like, Amazing. they knew who you were, they watched your videos and they were like, I'm totally going to be part of this video. And then they were lo- like, there's this one, I think she was blonde hair and she was really sweet and she was like, I don't want to read this to you. And you were like, no, no, it's like, okay. Do it! Yeah. <laughs> you uh, little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> there was one guy who had to read out a comment to me that was, 
in the video. It was like, um, was this it the had English been guy? left. It had been left in one of my videos. I can't remember, but it was like the comment was, I think it was like, I want to fuck your face until your head explodes at my comb or something. Like it was, it was. Her, I just showed up. I should put a warning on that before I said this. this is horrific. Trigger warning. And uh, yeah, some random stranger had to read that out to me, and that was just the most <laughs> awkward. He handled it like a champ, though. Gotta give it to him. Worryingly. <laughs> yeah. He was wearing Leo Gay. Was it him? He's like, so until your head explodes with my. Mm. He was like, I'm wearing Leo Gay with it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so those are kind of the worst comments I get. I get. Um, I actually got a comment recently that was like, fuck Claire, she's the reason fax is over. And I was like, thanks for giving me that sort of level of importance, but it really, like. No, I'm no, really no. Not. No, no, no. Take it and run. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I just. I wasn't <laughs> feeling it anymore. <laughs> yeah, and so I just pulled the plug along. I just. Whole thing. My mom always said, if you feel something, do it. And I just did it. <laughs> just ran with it. Oh my god, I have a good story. Is it about you touching me? No. <laughs> Um, what? what is it with you judging? I'd like my personal Give space, yeah, madam. Just... <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. That's like, that's like, <laughs> what is it with you and me breaking into your house? What's the problem? <laughs> it's just a broken window. Okay. A picked lock. Like, it's <laughs> I apologise. Consent is important. Uh, so, um, recently, there was a YouTube, there was a shooting on YouTube. In America. Keep, and it, keep it funny. What is happening here? No, it's a story. It's, um, is this a funny story? No, it's not a funny story. It's about hate comments. So give me a second. Okay. So there's a YouTube, there was a shooting on YouTube recently mm. and there was a lot of people tweeting shit that was very, very different and I was watching it on TV. Like I think I had cast CNN from my phone or something, but it was on my TV. Um, or else, no, Alex actually turned it on to an American TV because we have Sky. So he turned it on to an American TV station. We were watching their news as it, ha- as it was happening. Okay. Because it was evening time here. And on the television, they started talking about Walmart. And they started to say that it was, and I'm positive that this is what I heard, that this is the very start, like very, very soon after it had just ended or whatever, or you wouldn't have been shot. Right. She got shot, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. So... The, the, herself, the information was, ch- yeah, the information was, cha- you know, it always changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but they started talking about Walmart and they started talking about Walmart employees and I could have sworn, like I was 100% convinced and it's only since that I'm like, I can't find the report of this anywhere. Did okay. I misunderstand what they said? That it was a disgruntled Walmart employee. Like I genuinely thought I heard them say it was a male Walmart employee from, oh. from the Walmart up the road. Oh. And that's what, that's what was suspected. Which is obviously not what it was. No. But then people were tweeting and Keemstar tweeted. So some people started tweeting that it was a woman in a headscarf and then they all started tweeting their their usual mm-hmm. like anti Muslim yeah. stuff. So then Keemstar tweeted, um I should probably shouldn't mention his name, so I don't wanna fucking start it again. <laughs> uh, too, <YouTuber>. late. <laughs> <laughs> too late. Uh, each, don't ever talk about you, sir. Uh, Had I known we were allowed time. to mention people's usernames, I totally would have called that YouTuber out earlier. <laughs> the big YouTuber who was like, your event can't do this. I would have totally called him out. You can if you want. No, thank like, you. Uh, <laughs> the first rule of the internet is always be able to stand over what you say on the internet, which I said to someone recently. Um, I so, stand over what I said. What he, that's what that person said. But anyway, sorry. But so I tweeted came Keemster and I was like, uh, I said something like, I've just watched on the news that they say it's a disgruntled Walmart boy because he tweeted, it's a woman. Right. Like, hashtag drama alert, which I thought was a bit insensitive, but anyway. And then I was like, I've just heard on the news you know, can you wait on tweeting until you're sure that what you're tweeting is correct? Mm. And I said that because like, he is actually considered to be a news source. Right. Like, and a reliable news source by a lot of people. Yeah. And he's got a huge audience. Yeah. And there was a lot of false information going around. Mm. And, like, in this instance, he turned out to be correct. Yeah. But, like... But there was no... At that very moment, there was the no proof. At that very moment, there, yeah, there was no... Like, it was a really early call, right. if you know what I mean? Right, And it had not been confirmed and the news was the actual fucking news was saying something different and he I think he retweeted me and he like said something and they all of his followers just went after me you should see my DMs like they're just insane and like uh, what you call it one of them I actually referenced in my comedy set last night because one of them was like fuck you feminist cancer scum hope you get raped 
um, have fun being eternally offended for the rest of your life. And I was like, well, I'm not the one who <laughs> went to someone else's profile and and told them they deserve to be wrote raped. A cap, wrote, wrote a fucking tweet in all caps and then pressed message. Like, the, I'm not the eternally offended one. But, uh, um, yeah, so then, and then, like, I, I kept having to mute all the tweets and stuff. And then I made the mistake of being like, I think I said, because I'm an idiot. I tweeted and I was like, ask him Star once to, like, uh, just wait on tweeting and she sends all his followers after me or something. So then, of course, he did it again. So then I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. And, uh, yeah, it just kept going. And then for, like, a week, anything I tweeted, people would be replying me, like, are you not going to apologize to Star, bitch? And, like, uh, you should bow down and all this. Oh, so that's what this is. You're going <laughs> to... <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> but it, I actually did. I Like, to be fair, I tweeted him and I said... Like I apologize if my if you got offended. By oh, <laughs> oh, Claire! By my, by my oh. <laughs> and that one he didn't acknowledge. Interestingly <laughs> enough, shocker. Yeah, because he fucking doesn't suit his narrative of me being a feminist feminazi who is like shrill and stuff. Um, and then actually he tweeted and he said, he tweeted retweeted one of my tweets and said your fake news. And I tweeted him back because Neil, who's been on this podcast twice, calls me fake news. That's the joke we have. So I wrote back and I went, actually, that's a good burn. I have to give you that one. I said, exactly what I said was, I have to give that one to you. That was a fairly good burn, fair play. And then one of his followers wrote back and went, no, it wasn't. You don't even know a fucking good burn when you see it. <laughs> what the fuck? I was like, you know, you're, you're actually burning in there, you fucking moron. You're at a 20. <laughs> Take it down to like a five. <laughs> oh. And then somebody actually, like, so loads of people were tweeting me and abusing me on Twitter. Mm. And then one person actually made their way to Storytime Podcast. And was like, who gives a fuck about your podcast? Ooh. And they commented on the video. I was like, thanks for the view. But they commented on the video. <laughs> yeah. Now, speaking of this extreme, uh, we're, I'm conscious of time because we are getting close to oh, dude, having to finish up here. here yeah. yeah. But... Uh, I do have to talk about this because we were supposed to make a video about this and it kind of fell through. But this was like years ago. Do you remember that person who went on Reddit and wrote this full article about me, you, Riyadh, Melanie, oh Sean God. Connolly, and just like clearly was involved in that? Bitch, yes. <laughs> Don't worry. I copied and pasted it into Evernote and I still have it. Amazing. So I'm going to read you your criticisms, okay? So this is what they said about you. Clazaire, majority of hits obtained by copying shit people say memes. That's true. And bad edi- bad editing, apparently. Mm, that was true a couple of years ago, yeah, isn't that? Now, I do rem- uh, you'll definitely remember this, because this part he was an absolute dick about. She openly admits to driving after a heavy night out oh, here. I remember this. What an inspiration. And it was absolute bullshit, because in the video you were like, I went, like, there's no point where you're like, I have alcohol in my system. Yeah. You say, I am... Hum- you don't even say it. I say, you were driving me into town. Yeah. I say uh, that there's um, there was a little too much drink taken last night. But in reality, this was... It wasn't morning when you were driving me home. No. So what I, I remember this... And I'm pretty sure it's said in the video, if I can recall correctly. Mm. But you say, like, I'm really hungover. And I'm like, I'm actually grand. I'm just really tired. Yes. Because um, I only had two drinks or whatever it was. Um, I need a couple of drinks, or I'd stopped drinking earlier. Or something I was, I was not as bad, mm. and it was three p.m. <laughs> uh, so like I was fine, <laughs> I was just tired. It was that was so annoying because I was like, kind of like I, now, the really. one thing that I don't fuck up is driving. Yeah. Like I don't fuck with that shit. So mm. it was just really, really annoying. But like, I got what he considers such a little driving thing, driving at three p.m. the yeah. next day when I was well, well recovered yeah like i was hung over because you get you're hung over the whole day but you don't still have alcohol in your system at 3 p.m especially if you've stopped drinking early on and started yeah. drinking water but there's a silver lining in this because also i don't drink that much in general so there's no way because it takes an hour and a she's half she's tiny it takes an hour and a half for one drink to out of your system how many fucking drinks do you think i had to keep them in my system till 3 p.m but, the size of me but to be fair right his whole thing was about criticizing youtubers yeah. and he goes in on me he goes on on riyadh he goes in on sean connelly on how bad our content is. But he couldn't do that with you. <laughs> yeah. He had to go into like something personal. <laughs> Thank so you, yeah. Right. So the James Mitchell TV. <laughs> Look at the right there. Yeah, exactly. Silver lining. The James Mitchell TV one. He thinks that being overt about his sexuality, telling obvious sexual jokes and giving no one else the chance to speak 
means that he... Shut up! Sorry, I didn't give him a chance to speak there. <laughs> Later in the comments, he goes on to say, James Mitchell is delusional. He always refers to his followers as if he has 10 million. He kind of got me there. Um, his, he, er, his earlier video states... Your shtick, though. Sorry, I'm trying to talk over you. His earlier <laughs> ones state he wants to work in TV, but he has zero talent. Yeah, well, he has seven and a half thousand subscribers. So seven and a half thousand subscribers, zero talent. I'll take it. I don't understand why people, like, if you hate Sorry, somebody so much... Sorry, to speak they, across yeah. you once more, I just have to very quickly throw in here that in the comments when someone else is like, I agree, that James Mitchell TV puff is really annoying. He, your man replied, hashtag, I eat spice bags, ha ha ha. <laughs> yeah. When you've got me, you've got me. You got you in that one, fairness. <laughs> Go on, sorry, uh, what were you saying? I can't remember. Sorry, I just had to speak across you. Uh, oh yeah, just like, that's perfect. Just like, um, I just don't know why people go to the effort, like the effort of writing all that. And he's like, like it was like, a full if essay. If you don't enjoy them, don't watch it. Like, I just, I don't get. That like, is the wonderful thing about YouTube. And that's why YouTube is better than regular television. In that away. you don't have to watch. Click away. So what I do, like, I will leave a comment that is, I, constructive criticism but only if I really care about the content do you know what I mean like, like were you to be let's say Jenna made something she could never I, I would yeah, never say anything she but, could literally she has put up a video of her dogs eating peanut butter <laughs> and I liked it but if you thought the lighting in a video had gone yeah. down compared to the week before you would be like hey just a heads up yeah yeah, not that I expect them to read it, but, like, I will engage in that way with mm. content. Like, I think the other day I commented on Casey Neistat because his new series, he was complaining that people didn't like it. And right. I was like, I don't think it's that... Or he was complaining that people didn't like that he went back to vlogging. And I was kind of saying, well, from my opinion, from my perspective, it's not that... I actually... I'm glad you went back to vlogging. It was just that I expected, like, something... From the, did you watch Casey? I remember. He made, I he made this that. big deal about a rebrand yeah. of his vlogs, yeah. and they're they're very similar. He also um, made a big deal about stopping. Oh yeah, which yeah, and so this is kind of starting again, but it was you know anyway. Long story short, so I left like a constructive criticism comment there mm. because I really care about that content, and yeah. I really like. I don't think he's going to read it, but like that, I that I would only engage semi negatively. It's not really negatively because yeah. you're trying to be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, it's tone, you know, it doesn't always come through the text. But I'm trying to be helpful. Um, and I would only leave that in content I really care about. Like, people that I hate, or content that I hate, I just don't engage with it. Correct. Because that, why would I? Why would I write that? Why would I spend 30 minutes like, bitching about somebody that I, I just don't watch them? But not even that. YouTube has given, since day one, it was five stars. And you could choose. And now it's thumbs up and down. Yeah. If you want to express that you don't like something, give it a thumbs down. Give yeah. this podcast a thumbs down. Now, just to clarify, because I know people will point this out. Obviously, we don't mean like when someone's being directly harmful. Like if you have a problem, like when Logan Paul did this, the, the video of the suicide. Like speaking out about things like that is different. But if you just hate somebody's content and you just think they're crap. Just don't engage with it. I just yeah. don't like. They're, they're Why not are you for wasting you. your time? They're not for you. Great. Yeah. Hey, the way I look at it is, hatred is wasted energy. Like really is, the thirty yeah. minutes you put into writing this first chapter of a book's worth of a hate comment, you could be watching a video by a charity and clicking on the ads on the video to help them earn a little bit of money. Not that we recommend that because that's <laughs> against partnership rules. Uh, you could be, you know, asleep. Retweeting a charity. I love you, sleeping. Or retweeting a charity. You're saying like really, really good things and I'm just like, I just want to be in bed, man. Uh, yeah, selfish stuff. Eating, you could be eating. Like, yeah, life's too short. I just, and then there are people who like, uh, that I don't like on the internet who I'm like, I actually just don't want to give them my energy. I'm just like, as far as I'm concerned, you don't exist. Logan Paul. <laughs> I actually watch quite a bit of Logan Paul's content now. Oh, you're that, gross. Just, oh, it's, you're it's a gross. morbid curiosity. I want to see, like, it's, yo, yo, no. what's up, squad fam, whatever. Mm -mm, mm -mm, that's bull. You have this thing. And we talk yo, about, what's up, man? <laughs> what's poppin'? <laughs> no, you have this thing, and we talked about it last week, you are a glutton for punishment. Yeah. And you will. There are certain things and people you hate, and you openly, privately hate. Like, with your close yeah. friends, you'd be like, I hate that. And yes, Whenever 
They yeah, Logan Paul's on that. I actually, straight on it. I've started to watch some of his kind of just to see what he's up to, and like I hate myself for doing it. I hate because I'm do. not interested in it, yeah. and I just I'm just like it's just morbid curiosity. But I have matured in a little bit in that there are certain people that some of whom you are referring to <laughs> that I literally just like it's like they don't exist because I'm just I've I've done wasting my time and yeah. people and that's why it took so long send for me, me to get back screenshots and I'm like don't send me that shit I don't care I don't care what they're doing people don't care we know who the people person is <laughs> no we don't yes James. we do no, Hi. <laughs> Uh, can I put this on the internet? I don't know, man. We haven't named names. <laughs> you have actually... I have not brought up one person's name. Yeah. You. I'm very calculated. I know how to be a shady bitch. You're just like... Yeah. I'm getting direct. too caught up in the conversation. I'm like... <laughs> it almost feels do you know like... Do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This wasn't meant to be a like, do you know what I hate on YouTube video, but it's sort of what it turned out to be. This was really awesome. I have no no shade to the previous one, but I have way more fun with this one. Yeah. Because the good. last one we were talking about quite a serious topic. Which was education and how we met through student union activism. Oh, uh, yeah. Also, I hated working in student union, so. I feel the opposite. I would. No, the the, the bits that we where we met was brilliant. The the worldwide. But the internal worldwide. politics. The inter- you mean the national I just, stuff? I just look back and I'm like, God, I was such a wanker. What's changed? Ah, <laughs> fuck you. I know that's, that I'm a wanker. I that's know the I'm cherry on the top of this podcast. Now we can wrap it up. <laughs> I have a joke about that actually in one of my my fifth ever comedy set coming up soon. It's like I used to work in the students' union in welfare. Is that so? Of, not only was I an insufferable prick, but rest of joke. Is that gonna be your like only your fifth comedy set? It's my fifth ever, yeah. Fifth ever. Fifth, yeah. Wow, you should be really nervous. <laughs> I hope it pays the bills. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Hope it pays the bills. Well, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> my my mission today was to make Claire regret bringing me on, and I have accomplished it tenfold. Oh god! Thank you very much for coming on, James. I'm so afraid to put this on the internet, but you know what? Fuck it. I didn't say anything terrible. I'll stand over it if anybody wants to talk to me about it. I'm a little bitch. I did not name names. I am spineless and I stand by it. <laughs> no, I hate that. Just to, to finish this, when someone says, oh, if you have a problem with me, you have to say it to my face. No, I fucking don't. Saying it about you behind your back is the fun part. Would you not agree? <laughs> uh... Like, if someone came to you and they're like, listen, I just wanted you to know, two weeks ago at my dog's christening, I said this about you to this person and I want you to know that I said it. I'd hate that, yeah. I don't like, care. Like, who the fuck asked Talk about you? Anyone. I don't yeah. care. Say what you want be behind, about me behind my back. That's none of my business. And vice That's versa. Fair. Yeah, vice I'd, versa. I'd agree. I'd agree. However, <laughs> I have been known, you know, to not turn down the opportunity for an argument. So, <laughs> either or. What do you mean? Either or. And not that I'm confrontational or anything it's just, it presents if the opportunity presents itself uh, <laughs> so when are you uh, when are you doing the California relaunch are you going to be on that just you in like a kitchen yelling at some girl being like you have nits <laughs> thank you very much for coming on the podcast thank this week James me. Um, remind everyone where to find you on the internet yeah you can find me on the internet interrupting people at youtube.com forward slash James Mitchell TV uh, you can also find me with the same Jason Mitchell TV on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter. Links are down in the description Thank and the you. show notes on Anchor. <laughs> this video yeah. brought to you by Anchor. It isn't, because then I'd have to hashtag it out. So it isn't brought to you by <laughs> This Anchor. is an advertisement. It is not an advertisement. Uh, <laughs> please check us out on Anchor and hopefully soon on Google Play, currently on iTunes and Pocket Casts. Awesome. Um, and hopefully two more apps that I can't remember the name of. I would like to ask before we go that you make me the first person to do three. Okay. Come up with a good theme and I'll have you back on. <laughs> Is that shade towards this theme <laughs> and the last one, bitch? <laughs> Next time, come up with a good theme. All right. <laughs> or actually, tell you what. How about people comment, if you're watching this pod, watching yes. this podcast on YouTube, comment down below with what you think James and I should talk about next. Because... 
people who watch you or people who watch me might want particular yeah. stories. Or if you're listening. They have to be stories. This is the only thing. That's the whole point it's of the called, It has to be story called story based. It's story time. Uh, it, also, they can tweet at us. Yeah, true. Because yeah. people are often go come to them on the podcast and they're like, I can just give advice. And I'm like, it's not called advice time. <laughs> I never said that. Don't get up in my grill. No, you didn't. Never right. take my advice. <laughs> I told you to go work for facts. And then you ruined the channel by leaving. Yeah, I have single-handedly pull the plug, ruined the channel, so it's not there anymore. Well, whatever. <laughs> Try channel's going to be much better. Not that it's an... <laughs> Not that it's in any way related. They're two totally separate entities. Maybe you should try holding your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, she's literal. <laughs> oh, physical comedy. Okay, <laughs> we've got to go. Nicole is meant to be coming in to record a story time now. So thank you so much for watching, listening, blah, blah, blah. Uh, check out the Patreon and links in the description. Goodbye. See you next week. Bye. Bye.